Hey guys, welcome or welcome back to my channel where I do art and talk about whatever I want. I'm Hawkblood or Laura and I hope you all are doing okay. My golf pet peeves, oh my god. As someone who is being part of the golf lifestyle since basically a decade now and who has a strong opinion on the things I want or better said do not want, I have quite a few pet peeves that are related to golf culture that just bug the hell out of me. And especially since golf culture and the female side of golf have been undergoing a rise in popularity since the pandemic, there's just a lot of things that I feel like have been becoming more and more prominent that just either A aren't really close to what golf is about or B are just weird and making not only me feel uncomfortable with being perceived in the scene. And while some of these issues are a widely known bugger in a community, let's just come all together to create a space where we can rant about the stuff that annoys us. Before we get into the actual video, I want to state, however, that I do not want to gatekeep, which is a point on its own. Um, I do not want to massively gatekeep anyone or attack anyone for doing things I'm going to mention that do not harm anybody. There are just my opinions and observations I am not speaking gospel, I am just a random kid who listens to dark waves since a decade and has an opinion and access to the internet. So let's get started. Just one thing that bugs me the most about the goth community, not only the goth community, um, the average dark alternative community including punk and metal is also affected. Um, it is just the way how especially goth women are fetishized. I am so sick of people viewing the goth lifestyle as a fetish. Yes, I do understand that goth is closely linked to the BDSM culture due to the fashion and mindset. It is also a fact that goth and BDSM has a linked past due to goth club history and such. The fashion takes a lot of elements off of the kink community colors, chains, harnesses, leather and latex are often used in traditional goth fashion, which is gorgeous, I love it. It is also a fact that there are a lot of goths in the kink scene, myself included, which is why quote unquote fetish goth became a term. It is used as a stereotype meme term, I know, but it is still a term that exists for a reason. However, just because a good majority of goth people are openly into the kinky shit, you are not entitled to a single sexual or romantic reaction. Me dressing partly in gear as my everyday wear doesn't allow you to be entitled to my sexuality. Gear isn't consent. Just because I'm wearing a color, I won't be your well-behaved subby goth thought or your hot goth dummy mommy. Shut the fuck up. I hate it so much that goth nowadays is viewed as an invitation by mostly men of course to just behave like absolute entitled assholes. I am just so sick of being fetishized for the way I look and I know a lot of not only goth but also other alternative people feel that way. Because we are perceived as something quote-unquote exotic, especially older men want to add a goth woman to their collection and that's so fucking disgusting because these jerks don't stop if it's related to minors. I sometimes feel like they purposefully seek out baby bats that are fresh to the community and very young. And at this point I feel like this isn't even a pet peeve anymore, that is just overall disgusting predatory behavior and an underlying issue in not only the scene but on a societal level that older men prey on young women. But we're talking about pet peeves today and not how patriarchy sucks. However, I think this is an issue worth mentioning because it's just affecting a lot of us really. I feel like almost every single goth woman or friend presenting goth person has been confronted with this issue once, so it's important that we at least mention this issue here. 
I don't know when this trend started, but I feel like it was becoming more and more popular during the pandemic, when all shops were closed down. But when did golf become a brand thing? You know, like Killstar, Dolls Kill, Disturbia, you name it. Like, is it my issue? Have I been living under a rock behind the moon? But since when did buying clothes off of bigger brands become a thing for goths? And don't fucking get me started on buying alternative clothing off of Timo or Sheen. But seriously, when did buying clothes from bigger brands become a thing? Because back when I checked, goth was an anti-capitalist movement driven from punk, being against bourgeois brands, making the best of the things you had. Maybe I'm also just old-fashioned and outdated with this mindset, but something about people doing like 300 bucks Timu goth haul bullshit just robs me in the wrong way. For me, goth and punk has always been thrifting, DIY, just using shit you have at home. I taught myself to use a sewing machine so I could make stuff that I wanted to wear to make my own creations. 80% of the stuff I own is either thrifted or stuff from my mom or a grandma because I feel like it's just so nice to have something personal with a soul behind it. And I know not everyone has access to the clothes of their relatives, but you know, thrifting isn't only like, thrifted clothes don't only have more soul, it's also generally more environmentally friendly. I also don't want to be a copycat. Like if everyone is buying clothes off of brands, we all in the end look the same. And being pro-individualism, the concept of buying pre-made clothes just rubs me in the wrong way as well. And I'm not wanting to say that owning brand clothing is horrible and you should be bullied. No, 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 no. I'm just strictly against the mindset that you have to buy from brands to be something or to belong somewhere, which is bullshit. Total bullshit, especially with alternative styles. And this mindset is also the reason why there are baby bats out there claiming they cannot be goth because they cannot afford the fashion like like, excuse you? You don't need any expensive clothing to be goth. Like, I work two bucks an hour. I am still able to afford my style by just going thrifting. But I also have to admit that I live in a German city that is very leftist and communal, where a lot of people provide free takeaway boxes with old clothes on the streets, or there are a lot of, like, clothing bazaar events where you can just either trade old-fashioned or just take whatever you want with you. But thrifting is definitely one of the easiest and cheapest ways how to get sustainable alternative fashion. And if you add DIYing to those thrifted finds, you can create amazing pieces that simply are your very own. And that alone makes it so special and so valuable in my opinion that any brand can go fuck themselves, really. And when we are already at a point of fashion, let me get to my next thing. Goth is not a fashion-based subculture. Luckily, the stereotype slash belief slowly died down again, but I've met so many people now who dressed in the traditional goth appearance, who later told me that their favorite goth artists are like Lil Peep and Billie Eilish, like... Ah! Like... <laughs> And, and again, there's no shame to people who listen to these artists, like I do too, but they are not goth. <laughs> I do get that people think the dark style of goth is beautiful. It is just a very elegant, mysterious and so appealing way to dress like. And a lot of people want that too, which is amazing. I love when people have fun with their appearances and live their visions of themselves. There is no bad thing about it. But looking a certain way doesn't make you goth if you don't listen to goth music genres. Vice versa, you don't have to look like goth to be goth. <laughs> I like to compare this issue with the metal scene. Metal is also a music-based subculture. No one calls themselves a metalhead if they don't listen to metal. The same applies to goth. Why are there so many people claiming to be goth 
if they actually hate golf music. Like, obviously you don't have to listen to golf music 24-7, but having at least a little bit of connection towards the music is necessary in my opinion. And I don't fucking care if someone told you that you don't need the music to be goth. Fuck off, yes you do. I believe that there are two base pillars of a goth lifestyle and that is the music and the political views. The fashion is optional, but if you don't listen to the music and aren't a fucking leftist, then piss off and do some fashion hauls on TikTok. White face paint. I know this will be a controversial one. And again, I'm not attacking anybody who uses white face paint or white foundation for their makeup styles. But white face paint kind of makes me feel weird in regards of an already really racist outside view. Like, name one popular BIPOC goth. There are indigenous goths, yes, like Santana Barella, but they are still all passing as white or Caucasian. And don't get me wrong, you can paint your face how the fuck you want, and especially if you do actual makeup art, but the whole mindset of needing skin as light as possible to be considered pretty in the goth world just feels odd to me, especially if we think about the fact that there is barely barely any BIPOC goth representation. Because actual BIPOC goths feel like they cannot be goth because of their skin being too dark. Excuse you? Also, the whole attitude of not wanting to be in the sun, otherwise you'll get a tan and that will ruin your pale goth dead girl skin. Oh, fuck off. And I am guilty of this mindset as well. I stood by those thoughts a long time myself. I still do with the point of staying outside in the sun honestly, but I am one of those lucky people who get sunburned almost immediately and my skin starts to peel off whenever I get sunburned. All of the peeling skin goths out there, they aren't guilty, but everyone who believes that having a tan or darker skin isn't appropriate for being goth? Go fuck yourself. However, there is one thing in the community that I myself think is also one of the worst tropes within the recent years. And that is the shift from positive to negative gatekeeping. I personally think that not all gatekeeping is bad per se. I think subcultures need a certain way to defend themselves from quote unquote intruders that use the culture to their negative benefit, such as the mention of groomers in my first argument or people who harm that culture with their political views. In my experience, gatekeeping was always used to keep especially right-wingers and abusers, or we all hate that word, posers out of the scene. Just people who don't align with our views on politics and societal behavior. We don't want those people in our rows. They don't belong in leftist subculture. Not all gatekeeping is bad, that's for sure. Yet there's one thing that happened with the gatekeeping culture in not only goth, but especially the dark alternative scene. And that is that the gatekeeping that used to keep out right-wing scum now turned against innocent people who just try to have fun or people who are new to the culture and are still learning and exploring themselves. Attacking baby bats for not knowing each song of every OG goth band while on the other side right-wingers are peacefully infiltrating the scene isn't helping anyone. There's also this burning rage against e-girls, which I partially do understand simply because e-culture doesn't really have the same values as other alt scenes and a lot of non-alt people confuse e-culture with other alternative cultures and that Loki sucks. It's basically being called emo in the early 2000s <laughs> that is being called an e-girl nowadays. But just stop attacking e-girls for just simply existing. Calling myself guilty for that as well. Um, but yeah, 
If they show damaging behavior or have questionable takes, that's another thing. The people who don't harm anyone except your ego, leave them the fuck alone. Don't feed the hate between different subcultures. It helps nobody and we all just want to exist peacefully. I hope I'm done yapping. These are one of my strongest pet peeves from the golf community that aren't just based on taste because I don't really count stuff like Ew, I don't like spikes that are too long on my collars and bracelets. Um, like no one cares about that shit. But yeah, these are my pet peeves. Some of them are more severe than others, I know that. I am, however, extremely interested in your personal pet peeves, if you have some. Do you agree or disagree with me? I am open for a little discussion about what moves the goth scene. Keep in mind that this video is more meant to be entertaining and more of a meme and not speaking gospel and trying to put myself on a pedestal. Not doing that, just funsies and ha ha hee hee hoo hoo. But with that, don't forget to subscribe and like the video. I hope you like the art of my OC Venus. It was quite a lot of work and I'm quite proud of it. So, until next time, stay safe and stay hydrated.